Hello, everybody. My guest today is Dr. Iman Furutan. He's the he's a parallel entrepreneur and philanthropist with over 30 years of experience in information technology, software design, and entertainment industries. He's the founder, chairman, and CEO of Contest Factory, Classic Tech, Zip Tech Media, Virtual NGO, and Invitation Records. He holds multiple U.S. patents on online contest systems. All right, Dr. Iman, are you ready to take us to the top? Yes. Hello, Nathan. Hello, oh. everyone. Okay, Let's so you're juggling like 10 balls. Which one's the heaviest? What's the most fun? Well, I would say I guess Contest Factory is most fun. And then right behind that is Imitation Records, uh, you know, promoting my artist, uh, you know, music label. But Contest Factory is what I spend uh, most time on. Can you still make money in the music label industry? Uh I guess uh, one should, not much as uh, from the sales of the music. Uh, typically, it's from the tours and me- merchandising, unless obviously you get really big. But since I was a musician uh, when I was younger, then now I'm actually, you know, uh, utilizing, you know, uh, t- you know, taking care of that need by having another artist and promoting them. Are these indie folks, or could you name someone that we might know that you represent? <laughs> We have a boutique uh, label, Imitation Records. My pa- partner is Ross Regan. He's the one who actually signed Elton John and Olivia Newton-John and Barry White and Neil Diamond. So we have picked uh, two artists. Uh, the one that we're working on right now is December Rose, uh, who's uh, in Montreal, Canada. Uh, she's indie, and we're hoping uh, uh, big things will happen for her. That's great. Will you guys be at Elton John's Oscar party this year? Uh, I'm not planning. Uh, Russ usually gets invited front row or, you know, front section, yeah. but not me. Yes. That's very good. Yeah. I, I it's been an event I go to, uh, uh, probably for the past three years now. It's a wonderful event. Elton is a great guy. So it's glad to hear that there are still people, uh, and, uh, you know, focused on helping, you know, creatives, uh, spread their art. I love that. Now tell me about contest factory. I'm going to turn capitalist now on you. What's contest factory do and how do you make money? Well, uh, contest factory is a, uh, company that provides uh, marketing technology platforms for all kinds of uh, size businesses, small, medium, and large. Uh, We do all types of promotions, sweepstakes, instant win games, all kinds of UGC contests. And in fact, uh, we, as you mentioned, we own the patents on online contests and voting. And uh, what what is that patent? What is, is that, is that like a copyright on the actual code? What does that patent actually entail? Well, the patent is actually a system and method patent. So what happened is like uh, in year 2000, almost 18 years ago, before there was an American Idol or Dancing with the Stars or any any other way of voting online, uh, since I was a musician, I thought there should be a way for artists and musicians that are all around the world who do not have access to Hollywood to be able to upload their music, to be judged by industry experts and also voted by fans created a site called makeastar.com. And at that time, when I filed the patent, nobody else was doing that. So basically, it's a system of method for user-generated content, for contests where all kind of uh, talented people, whether it's singing, dancing, essays, or whatever, they upload their music. They can get judged uh, by a judging panel and voted by the people and the winners selected. And is this a SaaS model or different? Uh, we have it both a SaaS model and custom. So for the last uh, six, 17 years, we've been really working hard. We've made a, both a science and art uh, from the, you know, from contest. We have all kinds of, uh, you know, top brand and agencies that work with us for our custom campaigns. And we also have uh, uh, self-service uh, platforms. So, Dr. Eman, if you if you look at the past 12 months of revenue, what percentage was professional services versus low-touch SaaS revenue? Uh, as of right now, I would say uh, probably about 70% was uh, custom, 30% SaaS, because we really haven't uh, put a big push behind the SaaS. We plan to do that in Q2 because we're coming up with a disruptive business model that I don't think uh, the art industry has anything like that yet. So we're going to be making big announcements at the end of Q1 okay. for a SaaS model. So let's just focus on the SaaS model. I know it's only 30% of your revenue. Let's just focus on that for a second. On average, what are people paying you per month to access that platform? Uh, average will be about uh, probably 50 bucks or 49 bucks. Uh, but our top uh, Tier uh, right now is at nine hundred dollars, which actually comes with all the official rules, legally compliant rules, which is a piece that most people miss. 
because it's Ill illegal in the United States to have sweepstakes or any type of promotions if you really don't have good official rules. But with our model, you can fully customize it, uh, get the rules as part of it. We even have price fulfillment. We have a white glove service for those people who want to pay low money but don't have the time to actually get it done. A lot of the uh, CEOs of startups and whatever. So with a little bit of a small fee of about 500 bucks, we actually take the self-serve package that you like fully customize it uh, and uh, provide it to you. And what year did you launch this company in? Pardon me? What year did you launch? Uh, the SaaS? Yes. Uh, SaaS, uh, I think it's uh, about less than a year, just about a year. Okay, so 2016, and have you bootstrapped the company to date or have you raised capital? Uh, it's all bootstrapped. That's great. Uh, I've had the company for many years and never uh, raised any money, even though now I'm being approached by uh, all kinds of investors. I think there's a lot of money outside. That, so we'll that's see. That's good. And what have you scaled to today in terms of total customers using the SaaS, just the SaaS side? Uh, that's probably proprietary, but it's not very big right now. So, okay. uh, Can like we say I less said, than 100? Uh, it's a little bit more than 100. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Um, that's good to understand. Now, now, walk me through some of the acquisition strategies. How are you acquiring these customers? Uh, at this point, uh, we're really only uh, focusing on some email marketing and also focusing on uh, some, uh, you know, a Google uh, pay-per-click. So, you know, so Google ads. Uh, and in the next quarter, we're going to be actually adding to that from uh, Facebook even. How uh, much are you spending on Google ads right now, just as a test? Uh, under a thousand a month. Okay, just okay. Just to see how things go. Yes. And what's your team look like today? How, how many people are you? company has about 20 people. Uh, they focus on different areas. The team that is focused on SaaS is basically only four people. Okay. And what are you, uh, break down the other 16. Are most of those just, again, custom working with clients doing professional services? Uh, they work on professional uh, services a lot. Right now we have five or six, actually seven campaigns they have to launch within the next two weeks. Uh, big brands uh, that I don't want to mention. Average price uh, points on those are what? Are we talking like 10 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand? Uh, the, it, it starts as a minimum of about, uh, eight grand and it goes all the way to, you know, to 60 or 70 the average would probably be about 20 grand. Okay. And where's everybody based? Are you all remote? We're all remote. All our clients are all around the country and outside in uh, Europe and South Sorry, America. Sorry, I mean your team. I mean your team. Uh, our team is actually uh, some remote. We have uh, uh, the headquarters. We have about 10 people here. Then I have a few people in California. We have uh, some people offshore in Europe and also in Far East. Okay. And then a, a few more economics questions just on the SaaS component. How do you drive churn down? I'm sure, you know, I used to run a company called Heyo, which did contests and sweepstakes on Facebook. And our biggest issue was uh, churn because we were trying to fit a SaaS model onto a tool that people used around seasonality and holidays. Um, again, uh, for us, it doesn't matter, we, the, especially with the dis disrupted model we're going to come up with. It will make, basically uh, removes all obstacles of pricing. It that brings all the tools to you. What does that mean, so, Dr. E, man? Pardon me? What, is it, what do you mean, removes all the obstacles of pricing? You're going to give everything away for free? Just about. Okay, how do you make money? Uh, well, there's a, there's a part of that, that they will make money. So, uh, you just have to, so stay it's not all, that. it's not all free if, if you're making money somehow. <laughs> Absolutely. So I guess the main obstacle is that a lot of the, um, a, a lot of other competition either have to pay per promotion or monthly subscription uh, and that kind of stuff. And we're going to remove those obstacles up front also. Uh -huh. And are, are you guys operating cash flow positive to date? Uh, on the SaaS part, no, but on the other side, yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, that's healthy. I mean, it's fair to say, I mean, uh, you, you said your whole team is remote, but if you're generally running cash flow positive with 20 people and assume an average salary plus, you know, other expenses on each employee, like, uh, I don't know, software you buy for them, healthcare, things like that. I mean, you know, put that at 80 grand. If I multiply that times 20 people that you guys are doing north of 1.6 per year. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's the cost. You're right. Yeah, that's good. Interesting. Uh, and you're, yeah. and just to be clear, you're cash flowing. So you're north of that in terms of revenue annually. Uh, we are very close to that. Uh, last year, last couple of years, we've actually done some, uh, work, uh, as removing unnecessary overhead. So, uh, yes, we're, uh, okay. break even close to break even. And we're hoping that the SaaS will actually exponentially grow very quickly. Interesting. So just to, just to articulate what you just told me back to you. So in the past few years, you were burning cash more than 1.6. You wanted to get back to cash flow positive. So you cut some headcount expense and other expenses. You're now about break even, and you're going to really double down on the SaaS model to try and expand 
without driving up headcount expense. Absolutely. Interesting. Very cool. Um, has revenue grown over the past 12 months? And if so, by about how much? Uh, but about 50%. Oh, so that's healthy. Okay. So you're doing about 800 grand uh, the, in 2016 and then 1.6 in 2017? Uh, that's what we're, yes, that's what, uh, close to that. Yes. What will you beat? What, what are you trying to beat in tier in 2018? You think you'll break like two and a half million or 4 million? Uh, we're looking to do over 2 million. We believe in 2018. All yes. right. You don't seem very confident. I'm looking at your face. Are you going to do it or what? Well, uh, I've got two or three competing businesses that will do more. So <laughs> okay. uh, the question is, uh, which part of my time and the team I want to, uh, you know, spend on that. Uh, yeah. for the other companies how, how do you manage that? Well, I've got good people, as usual, under me. So basically, I've been in the visionary and all these different companies that we have. I have a, a, a video production a boutique company that we do TV ads, uh, broadcast, national, local, and whatever. We have special software I've written to actually target any one of the 44,000 zip codes in the United States for TV ads at a fraction of the cost on any channel that you want. We have a media buying company. We have a DRTV company for inventors. So between all of these... Uh, and Contest Factory, since it's my baby, and that's the one I started uh, 17 years ago, I keep at it. So, uh, uh, and that's why I've been able to actually uh, absorb some of the losses because the other sides make up for it. Why don't you kill some of your babies so you can just focus on one or two of them? Uh, good question. I think that's what, uh, when, anytime I go to some of these uh, business meetings and they say, hey, you know, all inventors or all entrepreneurs like you and I have ADD and they cannot stop thinking about a new thing, kill a couple of babies, focus on that. I think at this point, it's probably too late for me uh, at my age. But so <laughs> How old are you? Uh, I just turned 60. Oh, you're not that old. Come on. You got another 40, 50 years. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Let's wrap up here, Dr. Eman, with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Well, uh, uh, Abundance, I think it's uh, one of the good ones I recently uh, read. Um, uh, Peter, who's the chairman and founder of XPRIZE. I was a member of the XPRIZE uh, team, uh, and that's one of the passions that I have. So, that, that was a very good book. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? No. Okay. No, number, really, I, I follow a bunch of them, but not one specific one. And number three, is there a favorite online tool you have for building your business? Uh, there is a great tool uh, I uh, founded last year. It's called Growbots. Uh, and Growbots is a great uh, tool for uh, basically email campaigns, uh, running different cadences. And I recommend that uh, very highly. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Oh, I try to get six, uh, at least six, I would say. Yeah, beyond, less than that, I cannot function. And what's your situation, Dr. Eman? Married, single, do you have kids? Uh, not married, uh, okay. but I've been with my uh, fiance for the last 17 years. So oh, it's wow. Yes, yeah, so... Um, so not Any married, kids? but we ha we're happy uh, the way we are. We decided if we sign the papers that us after that, usually things go south. So we don't sign the paper, but we're as happy as we were 17 years That's ago. That's good. Any kids or no? No kids. No kids. Okay. And how, and you say you're 60 now, right? Yes. Okay. Take us back to your 20 year old self. What do you wish that he knew? I think I, I wish I knew more about networking at a time. I got into networking late. I realized that uh, later on, maybe 20, 30 years later, that, oh, wow, you go to a few of these networking meetings and uh, just by meeting the right people, a lot of good things can happen rather than only depending on hard work and doing it all yourself. There you guys have it from Dr. Eman. Networking is where it's at. He did 1.6 million bucks over the past 12 months. The prior 12 months before that, doing about 800 grand, so doubling year over year. Super healthy. That's just one of his many, many businesses. He is an artiste, as we call it, an artiste, but also dabbling now in software, really going hardcore Q2, Q3, Q4 in 2018 to drive growth of the business past 2 million bucks at Contest Factory with his SaaS offering. We'll see if he does it. Dr. Eman, thank you for taking us to the top. Thank you very much for the opportunity.